car regulations, of course, and it's like Lotuses, Brabham's, Caldwell's, Titans, Crossley's, you know. Yeah, this is just our Group 2, which is uh, Formula 4s from different eras. But we were going through, like, what I love about vintage racing is all of the different manufacturers. It's not like modern racing today. So we have a Van Diemen, Titan, Macon's, Brabham, Crossley, Winkleman, Zinc, Caldwell, Swift. My favorite is the Eagle. I think there's no prettier Formula Ford than the Eagle, Lotus, and PRS. Yeah, you got to love the Lotus. I'll go for my Lotus to be British. Welcome to Ben Sissel. I'm Jonathan Green, and we're looking forward to a full day of racing here at Mid Ohio. It's a little overcast, but um, compared to what we had yesterday, certainly through the mid part of the day, very heavy rain, and uh, it uh, kind of uh, disrupted the uh, operation, certainly for the Formula Four race that we had, uh, F4 Americas, and uh, heavy rain, and they all switched to rain tires right before the race but as you can see it's perfectly dry the uh, pace car is coming out and into the pits it goes we will have a two by two star car number eight and car number nine on the front to lead us away bob paddle and eric inkrot inkrot here we go led by the number eight then old bob hale in the all green here we go they cost the strip here it's group two race two from mid-Ohio, and it is the number eight that leads them through and under the bridge and into the first corner and down towards the keyhole for the first time. Yeah, and the first group, Bob Hatley, Todd Strong, Eric Inkrot, all drove all the way out from California. We have five Californians in this race all the way out here at mid-Ohio as they go into the keyhole. I have to say, I, I think of all the cars I've been are on display, I think I'd love a run at one of these. I'm trying to form the first car out in uh, New Zealand a few months ago and I got the bug because they're not much bigger and not much faster uh, and so you don't have this sense of uh, trepidation as you were. You know you haven't got that much power underneath you. You've got a huge track, plenty of room to make a mistake, uh, but they can catch you out quickly if you get it wrong. Oh, look at that. Todd Strong locked up his front wheels. He's in the number two position. He's going to try to make a move here on Bob Hatley coming down the hill into the right-hander, I think. But Eric Inkrot's right there, right to his right. These guys race all the time together. They're very close friends. Um, Ray Stevens is also here with us in a black Formula Ford. Looks like we've got a double yellow. Yeah, Our that's... first double yellow yeah, of the say. weekend. Yeah, I can't remember seeing a double yellow all weekend. You could, yeah, I think you're quite right. Really good corner workers here at Mid-Ohio. They are really quick to respond. Look at how how well they're holding that out, making sure all the drivers see the double yellow. So we are going to have a restart. We're not sure what is the cause of this double yellow yet. But um, look at this field of cars. This is another driver class. These cars are very equally matched. They go through great pains. Like I was talking about, I want to just give a shout out to Kim Madrid and the Formula Ford Drivers Champion that she's a, uh, arranged out there at the Formula Ford Challenge. And uh, she's done a really good job, and, and her group has done a really good job of tightening the rules. And so they always race with us, SVRA, out on the West Coast. And she and a lot of her group are out here racing with us here and always putting on a great show. They love to have fun in the paddocks. They're really close friends, but really hard competitors. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing Kim in this group. She has the pink car with a pink mohawk. She had a lot of problems and had to overnight some parts for her transmission uh, from North Carolina to get back on the track. She was so happy to be back on the track, and I hope she doesn't have a mechanical or some kind of failure here today. Now the rules say uh, pre-1973 for Group 2. So are we looking at early 70s cars or are there 60s cars out there? Yeah, there's some 60s cars out here. It, it, group 2 isn't just... Um, so that, that car there, that new modern number 15 Formula Ford, that's, that's obviously after that. But a pure Group 2, there's different classes in each, that in each like group. Car. Yes. Yeah, and uh, there's different advantages. Just like anything, you know, uh, as, as time progresses and people learn about the cars, there's, there's different technology innovations that go into it, so it seems like the cars get faster the newer they are. I think it should have been born a, ra a racing car, because I'll tell you what, I, I was born in the 60s, and I'm not holding up as well as these guys. Some of these cars just look uh, as though they come straight out of the box. Yeah, they, you know, they, the drivers have a love affair with their cars, and they really go through great paints to take care of and uh, really keep the cars looking good. And some of the rules, the unspoken rule of vintage racing is the first thing you do is make sure the car looks good and then you make it fast. 
and that's kind of counterintuitive to racing. But the true vintage racers are like, the first thing I got to do is make it look good. And look at that eagle right there in front of the number 77 car. I really think there's no better looking Formula Four than that Gurney eagle. I love the Lotuses. But uh, there's something about that eagle that always attracts my eye. I wonder what's uh, held up proceedings. It's a strange one. Uh, very strange. But yeah, um, anyway, double yellow's being raised. We'll keep an eye on the pace car, because once the lights go out on it, then we should get back to racing again, and uh, Bob Haight will have to do it all again. But as you can see, the double yellow's still being waved. Back in the distance, the uh, picnic uh, blanket's being put down. And look at that old VW in the background. That's a classic. It is. And I love uh, places where there's a big racing culture like Mid-Ohio, Road America, Watkins Glen, Sebring. You notice, well, there's the, oh, there it is. Oh, it's Kim one. Madrid. <laughs> we can get a shot of that, the that, 291. That just answers your question. Yeah. She's having mechanicals this, this week. Everybody was coming to her aid, just like in any vintage racing. So unfortunate for Kim Madrid. Her daughter Dana's here helping her out. She went through great pains to get back on track. And she's being towed around again. Last good, couple of years, she's had some bad luck with us. The good news is she's not that far from pit entering right now. So we should be able to get the 291, the all pink. I like the top, like you said, the mohawk. Look at that. Yeah. And again, you know, that might cost her a little bit of time because of the wind resistance. But <laughs> she wants to look good. I doubt it. So we should get back to racing uh, at the end of this next lap. We'll keep an eye on the pace car. But I can see out of the corner of my eye that... Uh, she now is the 291. That's great. I love the mohawk. Sponsored by the Grateful Dead, Kim Madrid, out of Rancho Cucamonga, California. Ooh. Rancho Cucamonga. We, it's that place again. Yeah. How many racing drivers are from, from there? I don't know. It's a lot. It's real close to Fontana, so maybe they're just breeding race car drivers. I guess there. so. Look at that eagle. I love that eagle, that number eight right there. Beautiful car. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I love this range. Even uh, around the world, they still race these 70s Formula Fords, uh, all of different descriptions, Van Diemen, Swifts, you name it, and really, really uh, just gets, I mean, I don't think there's another car in the world that gets as much racing week on week than a Formula Ford, it doesn't matter how old, and actually race a 1990 Formula Ford again, it's a 1967 Formula Ford. Uh, and depending on who's at the wheel, Get the same result. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I just want to remind everybody that's just tuning in that if you think you might want to be interested in this, uh, we give SVRA racing schools on the East Coast and the West Coast. They're very affordable, a lot of fun. A lot of, a lot of times people will bring their fathers, sons, daughters out to our racing schools. And if you're looking at uh, racing with us, this is a really great class to get into. Very reasonable I say, on so cars. Affordable? And there's a bunch out there. If you get on the internet and know how to use Google, you can find 10 or 12 Formula Fords in your area that are for sale. Some are ready to go. Some you might need to do some wrenching on. But the great part about this is if you can fix a lawnmower, you can work on your Formula Ford. Yeah, the investment is really on the rancher because the car's not that expensive, but getting it Fettled. That's a whole different yeah. ballgame. But I promise you, if you get a car like this and you don't know too much about cars and you bring it to the track, probably want to bring a friend mechanic with you, but everybody here in the paddock that races Formula Fords will jump right with you, tell you how to set it up, and give you all the advice. And by the, by the weekend's close, you will have a really well set up Formula Ford actually by your competitors because all they want is more people to run with. Well, it looks like he's going to do one more lap under safety, but uh, we now know that uh, at least um, Madrid is off the track. Maybe there was another incident as well. K uh, Kathy, is it Kathy or Kathy Madrid? Kim Madrid. Kim Madrid, excuse yeah. Me. Yeah, so I think we've got one more lap left in this, but we're running out of time to run these guys. Uh, they've only got about nine minutes on the clock, so we're going to have a real sprint race uh, to decide this one. And at the moment, Bob Hagel, who got the lead, uh, continues in the number eight. Todd Strong is second. Eric Inkrock is third. Uh, and then Payanowski, Daniel Payanowski is in fourth position at the moment. And again, just back to the whole vintage racing thing. If this is your first time being exposed to this, beautiful cars, great courses. I really think that we have the greatest schedule in motorsports. If you look at the tracks that SVRA visits across the country, we visit the basically the uh, who's who of uh, racing circuits. But the other thing, like we learned last night, Jonathan, 
uh, in that group from California. They make good tacos. Kim Madrid's husband, Rudy, makes the best tacos in the world. He has a taco party for us every year at Fontana, and usually they come to Indy. He was at uh, Road America with us. So if you want the best tacos in the world, I know you're from Austin, Texas, and you're going to think that that's the best. Yeah. Uh, Rudy, he can make some mean tacos. Yeah, when you live in Texas, you, you get a bit snobbish about Mexican food. You're like, eh, you know, I, I live in there. I, li I live down there. Come on. <laughs> the Tex-Mex. It is. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, please leave comments on our Facebook, YouTube. Make sure you download the SVRA and Trans Am app. But leave a comment where you are, where you're watching from, what cars are really getting your eye. Who are you rooting for in these races? And we're probably about to go to green. I've got my eye on that 77 Coldwell. I like that. Yeah, I do too. I'm thinking right now, Todd Strong and Bob Hatley are going to go side by side into turn two. And uh, they don't mind racing very, very close. Too close for comfort. They're not going to be social distancing here at the green flag. <laughs> So here we go. Uh, the yellow flags still out. Well, no, they are back in now. I'm looking at the marshal's post. In come the yellow flags, and I think we may see the pace car come off this lap. And here he is. That's the reason why we are under safety is the Honda there uh, and uh, the safety car there. You see the lights are off. And so, yeah, as you rightly point out, Bob Hately in the all bright green leading the way will be put under pressure from Todd Strong right from the get-go. And as they head towards the keyhole, we may see some good shenanigans. Here we go then, folks. Out of the carousel they come, and back to racing. Good start from the number nine. That's a great start from Eric Igrot in third place. He could be challenging by the time we get to the keyhole. Here we go then. Hakeley into the left-hander, leading the way. Top four already pulling away. What a great field of Formula 4s. Now watch Todd Strong. I don't think he's close enough, but Eric Inkrot and yeah, Todd Strong at Road America last week, and they passed each other, I think, seven times in one race. Into the keyhole they go, yeah. It was a really good start by the number nine in the blue and white. Sliding out there, getting all the grip and more. Down the back straight. They go then, under speed, past the starter stand. It's all about the draft right here. Oh, no, Eric's no. trying to pick up the draft. The third car is the fastest car in a draft. He's not quite close enough, but look at Todd duck out. I think oh, look there at that. he goes. Use the draft. He's going to be hard on the brakes. Don't hit Bob. Look at that. Todd Strong knew right where he was, but then Todd taking the outside into that turn yeah, that was has the driving. advantage set up for madness, and Eric just couldn't quite get him. Eric's going to look out. These guys know each other so well. They race each other probably 12 times a year all over the place and they know exactly what each other is going to do through the s's they come then and a good restart clean restart but at the front it's still bob hately and todd strong regaining that second place a little further down the field hamilton in 13th place and stam and barber but look at this four-way battle now forming at the front nose to tail yeah, Daniel Pianowski has, has joined this group. He's been trying really hard to stay in. Look at them sliding through here. Here comes Todd Strong making a move. I don't know. Bob Hatley's car is a little bit more aerodynamic than Todd's. And a long straight like that, he's going to try to duck right behind him, get back into the draft. The 36 of Pianowski is really trying to hold on to this because if he can get behind them and get into the draft, he is going to be the fastest car out there. Yeah, it's interesting. And here pops out the number nine in third place. Can he hold the line into the inside? And yes, he does. They're yeah. side by side as they come through the keyhole. And I think he's got second place. Yes, he has. Nice job. Eric Inkrot makes the pass on Todd Strong. These two go at it. But the great thing is, is Todd knew he was there, gave him the room, didn't give him too much room because he doesn't want to give him an advantage. Gentleman driving, but Todd now is just going to think, how am I going to get him back? Well, he's got the, uh, he's got the, the slipstream, but he just didn't stick with it. And now he's going to have to settle for third place as they dive into the right-hander at turn four. Yeah, he's got Pianowski right behind him. Look at that, vying for the inside there, coming up. So not only do you have to be aware of what's in front of you, you're watching your mirrors, making sure you're not getting a bad line. This 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 part of the track, it's not really about the draft. It's about the line, taking the line, trying to get your competitor to look in the mirrors. Bob Hatley does not want to give up first place, but Eric Inkrot, Todd Strong, and Pianowski are right behind him as there's great battles, just like in vintage racing throughout the field. Look at this coming in here. There's a group of four cars coming into this hard right-hander under the Honda Bridge, up into another blind turn. I love the undulation here at Mid-Ohio. Here they come into the carousel. Todd Strong takes the outside turn. 
Jonathan, this is fun to watch. Oh, it's great. Yeah, and the fact is, that you see, we've got little clusters of racing all the way through as they pass our commentary position again and down the main straight. And now, big pressure on Bob Hatley as they head under the bridge again. Time running out, uh, just three minutes to go, so a couple of laps left for these four to fight it out for the lead. Now, where's the next overtake? Up to the inside of Keyhole, perhaps? Perhaps. Bob Hatley's really going to defend that inside line. And he opened the door a little bit for Eric. I don't think he was close enough, but right here, it's all about the draft. Well, They're going to try to get in line to go down to this turning into this passing zone down here, going into... Uh, the grandstand section is a little bit of a right-hander, but they're flat out right now. But Bob Hanley's got good straight-line speed and manages to keep away from the draft. So I thought they all draft past him down this long back straight. They haven't, and you can see he's pulled the car there for two ahead of them as they dive into turn four, and he holds on to that lead. Yeah, his car has the least amount of drag. It's the most modern of the top four right now. That there. might be it then, yeah. And Bob is a very experienced race car driver from Southern California. He's been doing it for years. He loves that car. He races it all the time, but he did just get past. It looks like Todd Strong is now the leader. Coming into the hard right-hander. They're just out of view, but he did get past after this hard right-hander at, at Madness. So Todd Strong goes from third to first in a matter of moments, and uh, it's just the right timing. Oh, 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 he's pushing it now. Now that's he's got the lead. That's Eric Inkrot. Yeah. Eric Inkrot is in the front. Eric. I'm proud of you, buddy. Nice job. He's been really showing some speed here lately. And now Eric Ingrat is taking the last lap sign here at Mid-Ohio. So time's run out, but and look at the lead he's got now that Bob yep. Hatley's re relinquished it. We've got a two-way battle for second place. But this is the final lap, and that was the perfect timing by Eric Ingrat. He started basically in third position, and we had that long wait while we got Madrid's car out of the way. Uh, at the start of this race, but once Ingram got the lead, I think he's now got another the lead where I think he shouldn't be challenged down the back oh, straight. No, no. But it we'll might not be over. Out. It depends. Todd Strong, Bob Hatley, and Pianoski have to work together here on this long straight. They got to get tighter than that and don't get out of this draft. Yeah, they're not tight enough. I think you're right. I think Eric Ingram, if he doesn't make a mistake, this may be his. Hatley's coming up to him though. It's Crossley versus Swift and Titan. Modern car of the number 80, uh, the number eight, excuse me, bright green. Bob Hatley has led most of this race, but is now trying to hang on to second place now as Eric Inrock heads towards the checkered flag here on the final lap at Mid Ohio for our Group Two race. This is exciting. I love it. Uh, Eric Inkrot, his wife is here. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen him win a race this highly contested. I hope he can hold on to it. I wish I could go down to the podium and give him a high five and celebrate with him. So Ooh, it's, he almost it's made Eric Ingram waving. Yeah. Bob Hatley, Todd Strong, Pianowski in fourth. There you go. Check and flag out. And he really was pushing towards the Look end there. That. He came out of the right-hander and almost missed his mark. But the 9A takes the victory. Oh, and man. it's Eric Ingram in the Crossley. 35F, who wins the race in style, chose his moment, took it, and then didn't look back. Bob Hatley will probably regret the fact that uh, he kind of had the race, but, uh, well. You know what, though, Jonathan? If, if I know Bob Hatley and Todd Strong, they're disappointed they didn't win, but they're so close friends that they're so happy that it was a great race that Eric showed what he had. I'd love to see a shot of his wife right now. I bet you she is just jumping up and down. <laughs> because uh, this is a family affair. And uh, you know they drove all the way out here from California. They raced Road America with us last weekend. They were with us in Fontana a couple months ago before this COVID thing happened. And they just have so much fun together.